Hello everyone, Dylan here. Happy Throwback Thursday, and the rotation leads us to our Bonicle review. And today's of which is on uh, Miss Tika Tapu and Krika from 2008. So we'll start off with the casters. As you see, has the cor corrupted and clean Kanoe Ignika, of which showing good and evil, of course. In picture of the set in action, and Miss Tika logo, Lego logo, and Bonicle logo, and the name, and also little picture of the Kodrax, of course, which appeared on all the casters and things, or boxes of the to of the line, of course. And the set number, age name, and age group, and amount of pieces. Oh, wait, most pieces, least pieces. Then the Bonk logo, and Cardi Dewey there. And the Kanoe Ignica, of which one clean, one scratched. I would put on opposite forms. And on the back, you see the Matoran combination, so which reusing the Matoran from the Winter of Pantoka lines, of course. Although I think Krika could have had either Gavla or Radiac, but I guess that's up to you. And then how to shoot the Ghost Blaster, how to put them in the camp back of the canisters, and also, the bio codes, which are probably no longer valid or whatever. And then, barcode, all the warnings. And then, out of all the Mystic Guys. Of course. And on to the instruction manuals. Which, same pictures on the front of the back, from the casters and everything. See, on the back, we're on the online survey. After Lego Club, and the combination with the Matorn again, all the pieces included, and the last steps. But whereas Krika's a little bit more unique because uh, after Lego Club, after the three vehicle sets of the time, which to which as in the following year they kind of did the same thing, but just were ride around ground vehicles, obviously. And then promotional poster of all the Mystica together and also the Matoran combinations and also all the Mystica down below and then the pieces included of course and why they put extra ads in this one is for him being the one with the least pieces of course so first of which is with Toa Tahu which first appearance of which since 2002 since, of course, the Fantoka and Mystica waves kind of separated out good and evil in both the three Toa in the winter line and the other three in the summer line, of course. And as for the feet, which are the usual Finn and Nika feet, but now in uh, dark red, first time with that, since Ko Kopaka ha was to reintroduce them, but in white, of course, and the arms and legs, of which are Paraka limbs, and on his legs, of which do have the Goras Bittle claws just sticking right out, probably to represent flaming or whatever. Although I think they should have been in orange or dark red. I guess they wanted to save it for Pharaoh and Skirmix. Yeah, I think orange would have been neat. Paying no homage to the original couple Tahus in the lower armor, in the armoring of which just Metru armor. Although I think they should, could have gone with Paraka armoring and Anika shoulder armoring for him, made him make him a little bit more better now. And the torso of which just the Paraka torso and also the all the uh, jet engine pieces used in the, throughout the Mystica line, of course. And the ones above also do have the new wing pieces, but used in dark red. And then, which also has the Ninrock Ghost Blaster, but nothing special about it. Unlike how Gollies did have a scope on it, and Onuas had a like cover up on it. But he's the only one of the three with an interesting weapon, of course.
anything as little as the blade thing. And of course the blades were reused in a 2010 uh, Power Myers line. Or yeah, in that line. And the main shield is just the Borak shield call shield, of course. And of course the tan one, which makes it spin freely. And then from the back is, of course, is the Matoran attachment, but just as, just the same as Golly's, of course. But of course, Odua's was quite different, of course. And, to, yeah. and of course, all the heads, which were, of course, Metru heads with the newer eye stock pieces with the back part cut off, of course. And the mask of shielding, which not at all having the look of it, but although some say it kind of resembles Iron Man, but not sure why, or ninjas or whatever, but I really don't see why. And of course, a little attachment bit to it, also common in this time. Yeah, Solak, of course, and you can attach him to the Matorna bit, of course. And there you go. And I guess that is about it with Tahu. And now on to Makuta Krika, of course. It was quite cool here, with a lot of neat mocking pieces like these front and back blades and also the chest plate of course and as you see his arms and legs are of course Avatoran arms of course so which don't bend or anything although I think they should have used uh, actual actual pieces from uh, previously they bump them up like 45 to 50 pieces like he's got a little bit more worth it because for him for this is just kind of weak and skimpy of course whereas for the back blades I would did reuse with uh, explode in the 2010 hero factory line and the front blades which are just two ended kinds with a lot of spikes on them and of course white and red mixture at least but till in other sets they were recolored in silver in the torso piece of which of which the uh, Tridax pod uh, torso piece which all the Fantoka Makuta had but also same problem as all of them the wobbly head and also this neat little chest plate piece of which also used on Odua in this wave and also on Matanui in the Glatorian Legends line Oh, which quite cool for that, but did see someone reuse this, but to make his own Matoran out of them, just about like the Metro Nui Matorans, of course. And to the headpiece, of which kind of reminiscent of the Barakis, with the same eyeball pieces, of course, and the mask, of which almost like a xenomorph alien ones with the long bit to it. All, uh, and stayed exclusive just to him, at least until with Thornass V9 in the 2009 Legends line, freezed it, but in silver. Oh, flinch. And if you look on the back, there's his Matoran connector, which is just like all the Fantoka Makutas and also Makuta Bittels as well. And since the how all his hands are taken up by his blades, at least it does have a shoulder launcher, kind of reminiscent of Nupuru and Nika's kind, and it's held on a Toawata arm piece, of course. And just like the other three Makudas, the Ghost Blaster does stand out a little. Now, on to the final verdict. 
blue lips. And of course, the color scheme of his reminiscent of uh, Predak in the Baraki line, of course. And so, overall verdict, I think these are which uh, quite cool sets of the canister sets of the Mystica, of course. Like, well, with Krika, a lot of good, mockable pieces, like the blades and all, but Tahu, sort of it also, but at least get Tahu for the first time in a long time. At least until with the 2010 Stars line, obviously. And also, he did kind of bit stick out from the other two Toas for having an actual weapon. Of course, rather than just only a ghost blaster, of course. And of course, Krika did provide plenty more uh, possibilities with his parts, of course. And of course, Tahu quite lacking of his usual appearances, but at least the pieces still workable for mocks and all. And so if you still have these sets from back in the day, well, I hope you had some good memories of them. And for those of you who have it and still have access to these, I say truly go ahead and get them. eBay, Bricklink, whatever. That's about it with this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.